Welcome to the Which Was Better podcast, where we discuss and decide which was better, the book or the movie. This week, we're talking Once Upon a Prince. I'm your host, Lisa, and today I have a very, very special guest. I'm excited to introduce the best sister ever, aka my sister, Stephanie. So welcome, Stephanie, and thank you for joining me today. (laughs) You're like, you bugged me enough that I finally relented and was like, yes. No, I was excited to do it. And then I'll, then you send me a list of all those books. And I'm like, yikes, which one do I pick? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot. Yeah, there are a lot. Of course, I went with the royal stuff. I like uh, all the royal Hallmark movies. We like to watch those. So, well, that's cool. So my first question to you is, what's it like being my sister? No, I'm just kidding. Don't don't answer that. <laughs> don't tell people the truth. It's awesome because then I get to go and travel up north and see things that I don't get to see down south. Right. Y'all, I mean, y'all know I'm from Texas and y'all know that my family is still in Texas. So my sister is still in Texas and our hometown of San Antonio, San Antonio represent. And yeah, and I am up north in the good old new england um where it's still cold yeah it's 80 degrees here 80 something we got up to a balmy 61 today we were all out in shorts (laughs) well everybody here is oh well that makes sense everybody here is just happy it's still not what we called snowmageddon here oh my gosh y'all i couldn't even yeah, that was very intense, and it was hard being this far away. <laughs> it was fine. I mean, it worked out, thankfully. We were blessed. Let's just say we were blessed, but yes. Yes. No. Luckily, most of our family came out pretty unscathed. Very I much so, cousins. I know there were some cousins that said they had some leaks. Oh, yeah. There was. Yeah. But the for the most family, part, for sure. Yeah. yeah, for the most part, I think we came out okay, so that was nice. Okay. So... Once Upon a Prince, what came first for you, the book or the movie? Okay, so this is actually, to me, a very entertaining answer. Yes. So, I start, I, for me, my first thought was, okay, I'm going to read this book. I've never read this book. This will be exciting. I'm going to read a new book. Okay. And then I get to go watch the movie because there's so many Hallmark movies that I haven't seen yet. And I was like, sweet. So, I start reading the book and I'm like, wait a minute this sounds very familiar. And then I keep reading some more and I'm like, wait a minute. So then I kind of cheated, not cheated, but I went and looked up the cover of the movie and I was like, I have seen this. So, <laughs> so actually, uh, without knowing it, I watched it first. Gotcha. Then I went and read it. Then I watched it again. And, mm-hmm. now it. and then I did the audio book version. Mm-hmm. And then watched it again. Same. Because I'm going to tell you guys, all the listeners here, that we actually read this back in January. And I had all these grand plans to record like super early in January before the podcast even launched. And then one thing led to another. And now we, it is mid-March and we are recording. So we both had to go reread and (laughs) rewatch the things that we do. So looking Second. back, my answer is yes, I watched it first, but I didn't realize yeah. it until after I started reading it. Well, that was me it. too. I watched it as part of um, Spring Fling, and I, I didn't even realize it was a book until I started researching for this podcast. And I was like, ooh, this is a good one, because I, you know, this was a cute one. I like, well, mm-hmm. I like the royal movies. So, um, so, but overall, you know, just the movie in general, did you like it? Do you remember liking it when it came out? Yeah, I thought it was cute. Yeah, I thought it was cute. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah. I enjoyed so it. So when you read the book and you started recognizing certain parts, were you like, were you, did the characters like pop up in your head? You're like, wait a minute, I remember these people. And yes, so I remembered the the characters. But of course, as we will discuss later, the situations were not exactly alike in the book. So I was, that's why I was like, did I see this one already? And then I went and looked at the cover of the, you know, the movie, was it the promo or whatever picture on the internet? And I was like, now I remember seeing the right. movie, but it was not, of course, 
but it was similar enough that I recognized the characters. He's like, oh, the the plot, the the generic or the general plot. Right, but you didn't remember details, so reading the book was like a fresh take on the yes. the whole thing. Right, correct. Okay, because that's kind of what happened to me. I remembered the movie and I remember liking it, but I didn't remember details. So when I was reading the book, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, right gotcha. there with you. All right, so I'm gonna Same. so I'm gonna back up for the listeners and do a quick summary of the book and the movie, and we'll start with the book since that actually came out first. So, Once Upon a Prince was written by Rachel Huck, and I feel bad because it's either Huck or Hauk, and I probably should have googled that to see, but um, to see how you pronounce her name. But it's H A U C K, and it was published on May seventh, twenty thirteen. It's the first in a four and a half book series called the Royal Wedding Series. There's four and a half of these. So some of the characters in the book that are not part of the movie, they have their own stories. Just a little spoiler there. Um, So the book summary is Susanna Truett never dreamed of a great romance or being treated like a princess just to marry the man she has loved for 12 years. But life isn't going according to plan. When her high school sweetheart turned Marine officer breaks up instead of proposing, Susanna scrambles to rebuild her life. The last thing Prince Nathaniel expects to find on his American holiday to St. Simon's Island is the queen of his heart. A prince has duties, and his family's tense political situation has chosen his bride for him. When Prince Nathaniel comes to Susanna's aid under the fabled lover's oak, he is blindsided by love. Their lives are worlds apart. He's a royal prince. She's an ordinary girl. But everything changes when Susanna receives an invitation to Nathaniel's coronation. It's the ultimate choice, his kingdom or her heart, God's will or their own. Dun, dun, dun. Every time I see the word coronation, I think of um, Frozen where she's like, it's coronation day. <laughs> it's coronation day. <laughs> That's pretty dress. <laughs> she's like half asleep. She's like, it's coronation day. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, okay. So that is the book. Now, Hallmark is notorious for giving us the bare minimum on their summaries. And it's sometimes it's really funny. So the movie, because it's just like there was a prince and he met someone. <laughs> Great. He rolled up He rolled up and said, yo. <laughs> he said, hey. I may or may not be a prince. No. Okay, so the summary for this, the movie premiered as part of Hallmark's Spring Fever lineup in 2018 and starred Megan Park as Susanna and Jonathan Keltz as Nate slash Prince Nathaniel. And the summary is, Susanna gladly accepts help one day from handsome stranger Nate at her parents' garden store in small town Georgia. Sparks between them fly, but when a photo of them gets leaked to the press, Susanna's in for the shock of her life when Nate is called back home by his mother for his coronation as King Nathaniel of Cambria. (laughs) And that's it. That's all we get. So. Uh, the first difference that it probably doesn't really matter, but the first difference is obviously the name of the place because in the book he's prince slash king of Brighton, Brighton, yes, Brighton Kingdom, and in Hallmark World everything has to end in Ia, like Cambria. Cambria. I don't know if that's not a rule, but it seems like it because they all kind of end that way. But so in the in the movie it's Cambria, which I don't know why they changed it, but they did, and sure. It kind of makes it easier to discuss the two because one Brighton and one versus Camry, Cambria. Cambria. Camry. The Camry, Camry car. The Camry car. <laughs> <laughs> He's the king of Corolla in one book. King, king of Corolla of the king of the bus world. <laughs> I don't know what it's right. Buick. Buick and Camry. <laughs> Y'all, we're throwing out dad jokes already. Yes. It's yes. less than 10 minutes in and we're throwing out dad jokes. I'm super excited. That's it. So the I'm gonna say first off, before we dig in deep, I thought that these were two entirely different stories that happened to share a couple of character names. Agreed. Yeah. I agree. There's they were like a night and day stories. Well, not night and day, but I mean they were just like very I don't know. One was one was very elaborate and very detailed and very uh, like specific, and the other one was very cute and very like almost 
whimsical and yes, kind of very quick. Yes. And I know that that's, yeah, and I know that's the difference between books and movies. And I understand that. And I know when you take a book and you have to adapt it to a screenplay, there are things that have to be cut. There are characters that have to be combined. There are things that, because you have to, the pacing in a book is very different from the pacing in a movie. So I understand that. But this was very, very different in my opinion. And I'm going to say at the beginning that one of the things I want to get out of, not out of the way, but one of the things I want to mention at the beginning, because we're not going to spend time on this at all is the faith aspect. This is a Christian romance and it definitely, that, that aspect of it definitely plays a large part in this book, like in the overall theme and tone, Yeah, but it's not mentioned in the movie at all. It's not part of the movie at all. And, you know, I I don't, faith and and religion are very personal to people. And so I don't want to talk about that because that can get very sticky and I'm I'm not trying to trample on anybody's beliefs or anyone's faith. So we're not going to talk about that part of it. Just know that if if this is a story that you're interested in, um, it is very much a Christian romance. And so there are a lot of those elements throughout the story and that is not part of the movie. So no, it's an undertone taken from the beginning to the end of the book. Yes. And there's various moments where they actually like, you know, pray together or they're praying on their own and they're having genuine moments where they feel the presence of the Lord, you know, so it's, it's, it's a huge part of the book. Well, and I'm thinking about it and do you maybe see if you agree with me or not, but it's really only if I remember right in like three characters. What in the book? Yeah. Yeah, like I'm, I mean, I'm strongly remembering it in just three of the characters, not the whole, like everybody. It's just right. If I remember right, it was just three characters that where you would they referenced it more often than not. Right, but it was also a huge part of the you know the the overall like attitudes towards you know where they were each going in life, and they you yeah. know part of their with those two characters. Right, exactly. So, okay, so outside of the faith aspect, the most glaring difference is, you know, for me, and I'm just going to very quickly like touch on them because then we're going to dive into each one of these. But to me, where there was a ton of missing characters that the, the book was populated with a ton of characters and they were not in the movie and they weren't even combined with other like, you know, and typically in these kind of movies, it was just a bunch of different characters. And then how they meet in the book and in the movie is very different, which I thought affected the rest of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, Susanna's parents herself, like Susanna's parents in the book and the movie are different. And I also mm-hmm. thought that affected each story. Yes. Um, and then the entire reason why Susanna and Nate cannot pursue each other or marry each other in the book and the movie are very different. Yes. And very Very. much detailed in the book. (laughs) 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 Very, very detailed. Because I want to make a comment about that whole part when we get to it. (laughs) There's something I had to do in order to make it make sense to me. Oh, good. So, I want to know. Yeah, like, so I'll get to it. Okay. okay. So for the, the missing characters, we don't get any of the following people in the movie. And come, some of these are not that, they're not that important. And that's fine. Critical. I just, they're I'm not, not critical. Yeah. No, because one is when Nate is in Georgia for his holiday, he is with, in the book, he's with two people. He's with yes. his guy, Friend? John. Yeah. And then yep. Liam, I think, is his bodyguard. And they're both there as his like assistants. And so in the movie, it's just one man, John, John, which in the movie, you know, he's an older man. But um, I, in the book, I felt like they were more like his own age, like they were like. Agreed. They seem like buddies that they went to university with. And that right? one ended up doing like bodyguard work for him. And the other one was like some sort of an advisor to the palace that kind of was like a go-between is what it seemed like to me right i just i remember because i when i remember watched the movie and i this is i do remember this one part because it came out you know a couple years ago is when john came on screen i was like oh hello john (laughs) i I was like like, aren't you looking aren't you looking dapper (laughs) yeah i was like more of you please Yes. And, yeah. Um, so 
so and those two characters are combined into one, which is fine because Liam didn't. I mean, you know, they were they were part of the story. It's fine. They were more of it like Nate's, sense. yeah, more of Nate's like Jiminy Cricket, like conscious, like in the background, going, "You can't do this. You can't like Susanna." <laughs> um, and then there's Gage Stone, who's in the book. These are all characters that are in the book and not in the movie. And Gage Stone is Susanna's boss because in the book, she actually doesn't um, she doesn't wait to start her career. She starts it and she ends up working in a landscape architecture firm with this guy named Gage Stone. And he is very aggressive in trying to get business because he's like broke and, you know, at one point even asks, asks her out. Yes. Weren't they classmates, though? Yeah, I think they they all went to school together. Yeah, small town. They all went to school together. Because another character that's not in the movie is Gracie, uh, Susanna's best friend, who used to date Gage Stone, and they hate each other. (laughs) Which made it fun when they were together, because it was... (laughs) They were like, what are you doing here? Well, what are what you are doing here? Uh, I'm here to see Susanna. Well, I'm here to see Susanna. They, <laughs> you were well, can you not come when I'm coming here? Hello, I was here first. So the, we miss out on, on Susanna's relationship with Gracie because, you know, in the movie, she has her sister, Avery, which is great. Mm-hmm. And she has her parents, which is great. They're all very close in the movie. But, you know, you do get um, some extra friendships in the book that Susanna has to go and talk to, you know, these various things that start happening to her. Uh, One of the, I don't know if it's even bigger, but in the book, Nate owns a house in St. Simon's. Their family, that's their holiday home. So the people of Brighton scoured the United States and said, St. Simon's, Georgia is where we want our American holiday home done. And apparently they have an estate there. And the reason he's there is because there's another friend of the family named Miss Butler, who in the movie, I think, gets turned into Mrs. Waller. It's Waller, yes. And in the movie, Nate comes to stay with Miss Waller. Um, at her house. Just, he stay yeah, at her just house? because, right? Just, just as Holiday. a break. A holiday break. Yeah. But in the book, he's there because there's a hospital wing that's opening in his in the king's honor, and he's there to represent the king because the king is still alive. Sick, but sick. With yeah, with cancer. Yes. So what I found interesting, and I want to know your thoughts on this. If the royal family of Brighton has a summer home or a vacation home in St. Simon's, Georgia. And it's been in the family because he makes it seem like it's been in the family. He's like, I used to come here as a boy and yes, no one in St. Simon's knows that a Royal family. (laughs) (laughs) Mom, who lives in the big house down on the water? (laughs) We don't talk about it. We don't know. We never see them. I mean, that was the one thing I just kept thinking to myself is it makes sense in the movie why no one knows who he is because Good point. I actually there. never thought of that that way, but you're right. I mean it's it's a small town, everybody knows everybody's business. And in small towns, everybody knows where everybody lives. And if you're if there's royalty living out there, they're gonna know it and everybody's gonna know it and it's not gonna be anything like a surprise. Right. I mean, you know, here in <laughs> Here in New Haven, we get people that come here because, you know, we've had, I say we, like I'm a part of this, you know, Yale community, but people, you know, there's been very famous people to graduate from Yale and even some semi-famous people. And anytime anybody remotely famous comes, everybody knows that, oh my God, they're coming to New Haven. And I just find it interesting that all that time they own that house, that nobody knows there's a royal family (laughs) <laughs> the summer home that owns it. Well, even if it's just that they own it, because if he's saying maybe he's been there since he was a little kid, maybe he hasn't been there and since he was like a toddler and they just don't go back very often. But still, that's true. You know, because if they're like, oh, they and maybe they own it under an assumed name of something. I mean, it might be an LLC just to hide their identity because you're <laughs> right, because 
Well, now that I anonymity think about it, would be key for them, I would think. Right. If they're going to go on holiday, they want it to be a straight up holiday, like no. <laughs> right. Because in the movie, when Susanna gets her big first remodel or landscape job, she does Mrs. Waller's gardens on mm-hmm. the advice of Nate. Like, hey, I know somebody who can do this for you, as she makes the comment. But in the book, Susanna redoes Nathaniel's family's vacation, you know, in St. Simon's. She redoes their gardens. And he makes a comment, you know, at the beginning that it's overrun and it's been torn up. And so you're right. Maybe they haven't been. It didn't sound like he'd been there Because, you know, part of him being there for that hospital benefit is he swore um, Mrs. Butler to um, privacy, like, don't tell anybody I'm here. I'm going to sneak in, do the benefit, and sneak out. Yeah. So maybe that's why. Because I I just kept thinking, nobody knows who he is. Like, nobody's even familiar. Like, I sure would keep up. Be like, there's a royal (laughs) that lives down the street, and every (laughs) once in a while they show up and listen <laughs> and sometimes there's a really nice car that just parks there with a dude who stands outside and just looks at the car yes <laughs> it's I amazing to go watch yes. and all the kids ride by on their bike hey <laughs> <laughs> so okay but you know i'm like okay i i it's one of those things where yes it's fiction i have to just suspend certain things and just say okay i never thought of no that that's, that's i never thought of that and now but you know it's definitely a something I didn't think of but but yeah I always thought it was run down and he was there to stay because nobody it was kind of like a way for him to get away and go somewhere yes. that nobody would know where he's at right so if nobody would know where he's at I would think that this has been in there and it's been kind of neglected or whatever yeah that makes more sense of why even why the garden wouldn't be in top shape because you would think that a royal family would make sure that all of their properties are taken care of but yeah it sounded to me like it was also the king's like thing more than anything and now that his you know the king was sick and things have fallen by the wayside i guess you know maybe that's what the whole deal was but anyways so uh another character that we don't get in the movie is uh, aunt rue which is i can't tell if it's her aunt or if it's gracie her best friend's aunt either way it's gracie's aunt Right. Okay. I was like, cause yeah. I couldn't remember. It was Gracie's aunt. And um, <laughs> Susanna stays at her house. Yeah. Until Aunt Rue decides, you know, I'm which coming to my beach house. Get out. <laughs> which I was going to say, which that's a sweet deal the way she d- yes, described it. Is. She yes. stays in this really nice house with all the furnishings on the beach. Right. Like basically very little rent. Mm-hmm. With the only stipulation that, that being that if she decides she wants to come home, you're out. <laughs> and Susanna kept saying, I don't know where to go. And I'm like, your parents' house. <laughs> uh, your parents live in town down the street. In or your, or your sister. Or her sister is 17. Her sister is yeah. young in the book. Her yes. sister is still in high, high school. school. So there's got to be a couch but or she something. She couldn't live with Gracie. Because yeah. remember, I think she and Gracie tried to live together. Oh, yeah. and it was like a no-no. She was like, it didn't work out so well. And I had to I had to move out before I ended the friendship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and it's it goes along the line, as we mentioned earlier, the faith aspect, because part of Susanna at the beginning of the book is very, very scheduled and very, very controlled. She has what everybody kept saying, the plan. You have the plan. You have a plan. And the plan has now been disrupted, your plan. And part of the faith aspect is she loses everything that was in her plan and she gets stripped down to basically nothing, which her job, her fiance, uh, her house, everything, everything gets stripped down. Her future aspirations. That's part of the faith journey is that she's like, you know, God, I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm listening and I'm ready for you to do with me what you will. I've got nothing. I'm the yeah. perfect candidate for you to do what you want. Cause I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's part yeah. of the reason why her character is there is to take the house away. And I, and I get that, but it's, since it's not that we don't get that in the movie. It's not necessary. And so I understand that, but she is in the, in the book. And then the next few, there's four more characters I want to talk about. And they actually, I think are the most vital that are missing from the Mm -hmm. movie. The first one is Steven, which is Nate's brother, brother, younger brother. 
younger brother. The younger brother. Because he actually in the in the book is the reason for bringing Susanna to Brighton. It's not this not landscape apprenticeship type thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so and, convenient in the movie. I got an apprenticeship. <laughs> yes. Out of nowhere, after meeting somebody two days, three days ago. That I didn't apply for. <laughs> that I get to fly all the way to Cambria. <laughs> By myself. Done. Oh, no. I get to take my sister. I, I would have done the same thing. As your little sister, if you were like, <laughs> I got to go to some European country for a couple weeks. Uh... Excuse me? Pack me your luggage. <laughs> Guess who's going with you? <laughs> Shotgun! <laughs> so I can't fault Michael Amy. News. I can't fault Amy for that. I'm like, yeah, no, go. But but did she so, go? But did she go with her to do that the whole time? Yes, right. Or did she go just for the coronation? She was there the whole time. Yeah. In the movie, yeah. That's what I thought. So yeah, because as soon as she finds out, she's like, wait, what? She's like, I'm, I'm going, going with it. it. <laughs> yeah. So she, you know, so Stephen is the reason why Susanna ends up in Cambria, or in Brighton, in the Brighton. Book, sorry, Brighton. And what did you think about Stephen, the care, the his brother? So Stephen was the carefree kind of. I don't have any commitments because I'm not the next in line. I get to kind of mm-hmm. do what I want. I get to kind of go chill. Uh, he was into what was it? Is it? Rugby? Uh, was it soccer or rugby or something? I want to say yeah. it was soccer, but anyway, but he he apparently didn't make the team or didn't make the cut. And had to work all this time. Lacrosse, something like that, right? Yeah. Something. Sorry, it's a sport I don't play, so I don't know. <laughs> never did. Um, but so he gets to go and like pursue his passion and all that kind of stuff, and so he just seemed like a like a fun lover of life kind of thing. And then when it came to the whole situation with Susanna, I think he was kind of like the, well, if she may not be here, she doesn't be here, bring her over, let her check us out, see what she, you know, put her in the situation and see it's not as easy as it looks kind of thing. But I liked him. I I thought he was kind of like a fun guy. He seemed like a. Oh, dude, because I hated him. Oh my gosh. Oh. No, and that I that's what I love about because when you read a book, it's like you get your own perception of, mm-hmm. you know, motivations behind these people. It's I thought what he did was terribly cruel because <laughs> he was he's with the queen. This is Stephen we're talking about in the book. He's with the queen. He's like, listen, she ain't one of us. And so why don't uh-huh. you bring her here and show her how much she won't fit in here? And then once Nate sees that and we embarrass her enough, she'll go home with her tail between her legs. And I was like, you're the worst. No, but then do you remember when it finally, that's very true, but they're siblings. I mean, come on. <laughs> he has to have, he's probably just a tad bit resentful that all this is going down for yeah. Nate. And he's like, but if you remember once, he finds out that he, that Nate, once Steven finds out that Nate really like if he can tell that he yeah. really likes her and loves her, he's like, hey, now we know. Now we know that he really loved, because at that point, nobody would admit to loving anybody. Nobody admitted to right. feelings. And it was this big, you, you know, he was probably like, well, you think there's something going on? He says they're not. She says they're not. Well, fine. Let's put it all together and see what happens. There's, you know, she probably won't handle it. She probably can't hang with us. She's not. She'll just run away and we'll be done with it. And then whatever the is it Jenny the, yes, the girl Lady works. Jenny Lady Jenny can come in and do her thing and that's it. But once I think he sees later in the book, he even sees like, do you love her? He's like, well, there you go. Now you know. It yeah, was all and it, he was kind of the pusher of like, you know, get going. This is what you want, then claim it. If it's not, then let's move on. Right. No, I get it. And I know that it's, you know, maybe the author already knew that there was going to be a continuation of his story and his character growth because he gets his own book. Spoiler alert. He gets his own book. Oh. I was already figuring out when you said that which ones would be it. And I'm like, oh, no, like he gets his own. He gets his own story. Um, 
you know, I, I get it. I just, in that moment, I was like, you, sir, are the worst. <laughs> and I hate you, but I do love a good villain. And Amen. And there were not very many in the movie, which is no, why there were a ton was in the Hallmark there was like versions. Many. Yeah, Hallmark yeah. versions of villains. But in the book, man, Lady Jenny is vicious. She was wasn't she deliciously dish? Yes, she was just she's like, like that. Lady, she's like Lady Catherine de Berg from Pride and Prejudice, just vicious. And I loved it. And even when I hated her, I was like, oh, I love a good villain. And yes. I don't want to give too much away, but she gets her due, and it's... It was so good, too. It was so good. It was I so did good. Like that part. I did like it, too. <laughs> that's what I was like. It was so... It's good to have a villain, because then you have somebody to be like, yes! Like, in the book, yes. you like, that's it. Get it, girl. That's right. Mm-hmm. You tell her. <laughs> I love a good villain when I know they're going to get their due at some point, because sometimes you don't get that re- resolution where the villain gets their due. They just kind of get that story gets resolved quickly. But man, in this one, you you get that satisfaction of yes. Jenny. You suck. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> so there is Henry in the book, who's the prime minister, who in the, okay in the book, while Prince Nathaniel is in Georgia on holiday and doing this hospital opening his father is sick he's got cancer and we do get a couple of scenes where his father the king his leo is talking with the queen and they're you know they they do show glimpses of him in his final days and one of the things that he decides to do is establish henry the prime minister as kind of like taking over responsibilities while he's sick and while before nathaniel becomes king and whatever but what we do find out later <laughs> cha, cha, is cha. that you know, else? Because was there a moment when Henry was first introduced that you were like, were they? Did they? I got a serious Princess Diaries vibe off of that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Because <laughs> you find out that Henry and the Queen were former love interests before she marries the king. Spoiler yep. alert. alert. I should have started with that. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry uh-uh. Charlie. But you do find that out and you find out, I won't go into a lot of detail, but you find out they used to be in love before she married the king. And um, I thought that was interesting. I don't know if it would have added anything to the movie. No, because the movie is very different than the book. I don't think I was, there would have been was, any reason to. Because I was wondering, I guess when I rewatched the movie after I read the book, I was like, "Ooh, are her and John gonna <laughs> give each other yeah, the homework, no. guys?" <laughs> Not when he's calling her mum. <laughs> yes, mum. <laughs> Whatever for she the family, says, mum. <laughs> she says in the book, she says, "Call me Campbell. We've known each other forever." Yes. And he does. And then later she's like, I wish you would call me Campbell. And I made a note. I was like, he did four paragraphs earlier. He did. He called me Campbell. Go back. Come on, Campbell. Stick with it. So, you know, and, and Henry's really the one who explains a lot of the historical details of why Prince Nathaniel has to make the marriage choices that he does and all of this stuff. And We'll get into that part in a minute, but he is definitely missing from the movie. And mm-hmm. then there's very briefly another prince named Pre- Prince Colin, who's at the coronation in the book. He is a cousin of theirs or something. He's at the coronation and he takes a quick, very interest. He's very interested in Avery. Very Avery. quickly. Yes. I'm sorry, but the whole time I was like, she's 17. <laughs> well, how old was he? Like 23. Oh, I'm like, she's 17. Yeah, that and, didn't bother me so bad. Mm-hmm. It would if it was my daughter. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm reading, like, right. <laughs> but I'm reading fiction right now. So it's like, wow, it's okay. She comes, Avery comes bouncing over to, to Susanna. She's like, Colin wants to show me around. We're gonna, we're just gonna leave. And I'm like, girl, she's 17. No, you're not leaving with this man that you just met in a foreign yeah, country. Sure. Yes, I know. For realistically, yes, I would have been like, um, "Negatory Ghostwriter, try again." We're not doing that. <laughs> so that's all I kept thinking. I'm like, "She's 17." And but yeah, another 
spoiler, she gets her own book. Good to know. With him. Good to know. Well, that's so, three of the four series. Yeah, so that just think of the four. Yeah. Okay, and the last character, I, I'm very, very interested to get your take on this. Okay. There is a character in the book named Aurora. Mm-hmm. She used to work in Washington, D.C. Yeah. As a lobbyist. Lobbyist or somebody somebody in the political world. Very successful. And she gave it all up to live in the woods. (laughs) In St. Simons. I'm not making that up. I'm not being facetious. No, no, no. She really did. And they make a point of saying she's very wealthy, but she lives in the woods. (laughs) Yes. She lives like at a campsite or something. Kind of like some sort of a pre-made camp something site that she's fabricated out of, I guess, either things she's decided she could keep or things that she went and found or whatever. But she does this. She's like a wanderer. Yes. Just like a big wanderer. And yeah. apparently everybody in the community know who she is, knows who she is because... At one point, Susanna says to one of Nate, um, Nate's guys that's with him, like, when she comes to show up for the first meeting for the garden design, and the guy's like, you're late. And she goes, yeah, I got caught up with Aurora. And he's like, who? She's like, oh, you don't know, yeah, you don't know who Aurora is. Aurora, but sometimes yeah. you get caught up. <laughs> uh, she, get caught up with Aurora. she, to me, was a very interesting character. She was very quirky. She showed up at random times and it was basically like a, a voice like almost like a it's oh. almost like a guardian angel yes. if you were going to look at it based on the religious side of it it was like having a guardian angel that popped up you know hallmark has those shows where like what was the one about the shoes you know the, oh, the, the shoes with yes cameron bray and gene smart yes do you know how gene smart just shows up and yes like, Provides a piece of, I don't know, cri- you know, cryptic, just a cryptic yeah. message or like a, don't forget about this or what, or an encouragement or you are right. crazy. Like, what are you? To me, that was the same type of character, just in book format. So it was almost like a little guardian angel of some kind that would just pop up out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. And again, I, I understand why she couldn't be part of the movie because there wasn't that faith aspect, but I really liked her character. I did too. I did and too. I wanted more of her and for her. <laughs> I know. I was like, could there be a happy balance? Because I knew she was happy, but it was like, because she just was like in a little cottage, like the little one. What is it right now? That's a big movement. Like a tiny home. Houses. Yeah. She could live in a schoolie, one of those buses that gets. Yes. Yes. I could totally see her doing that with her yeah. shoes and stuff. Because didn't she still like having pedicures? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she would go out and get like pedicures. And, pedicures. You know, and she just seemed like such a sweet person. And and I'm gonna go ahead and say this, and and I feel bad because everybody has their style and everybody has their their ways. And so I'm I'm not saying this to knock on anybody, but the author kept referring to this particular character as crazy or wackadoo and i just it didn't fall right with me because i thought she was a very sweet character who said some kind of out there things sometimes and they were cryptic on purpose because Susanna would say like what what does that mean and she'd have to and really really aurora was foretelling everything that was about to happen to Susanna. and you as the reader are like girl listen to her because she's uh-huh. <laughs> she's on to something Listen so I, I, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't particularly like the full treatment of her in the book, but I really enjoyed her character, and it would have been, it would have been fun to see her implemented in the movie, even in a non-religious way, just as like an extra town yeah. person or something. I thought she was great. So her, she even talked about how she, what was it that she's. I fought my whole life to stay in a size two, and I finally decided, forget it. Now I'm a happy size six, and I could care less or whatever. <laughs> she was so funny. I uh, love and, her. <laughs> and she would just show up, you know, when when Susanna sometimes, if, it always felt like when Susanna was at her most desperate or, or most, or questioning, when she was kind of 
too much into her thoughts is when Aurora would pop up and say something and get her, you know, like redirected her or advice. Yeah. yeah. So, but speaking of the town, because Aurora was a part of the town, one major difference between the book and the movie is that Susanna's family business is not a nursery. It is the rib shack. That's it. I mean, come on. <laughs> You're in Georgia. There's yeah. got to be a rib shack. And I loved it so much better than the than the nursery. I loved the rib shack and the people I... that were in the rib shack. And I loved her parents running the rib shack, especially her mom, who was like, so, y'all, okay, listen. So this this, this storyline stays the same in that Susanna's father does go into the hospital and he is restricted from work. The, that is the same between the book and the movie. However, in the book, it's – in the movie, it's – it's uh, he's – he should probably take it easy and they nate comes in to help and he's just you know kind of helping out in the store and in the book Susanna's dad has a full-on heart attack and yeah. cannot do anything yeah he's like in the hospital for nights and like days. the whole yeah. Truett family shows up at the hospital and as soon as they're there her mom is like all right you're on this shift and you're on this shift <laughs> you're taking this day and you're taking that day and the, and the cousins are like i haven't worked she's like i don't care can yeah. you mom before can you I don't run remember on you? Yeah, yeah. She's like, you're on shift. <laughs> uh, this is not up for debate. You've got to yeah. do it. I expect you there. And if I say be there at 7, that means you better be there at 6.45 early and ready to work. <laughs> and everybody's all, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they were so funny. But I loved it because their family was huge and they all – they all, um, you know, showed up. And yeah. It was a family and, business for sure. It was a family yeah. business. And so it was a big deal for Nate to show up and pitch in because everybody needed to be on schedule to help balance out. And when Nate shows up, um, he, <laughs> they have him because they're like, well, you've never done anything before. So you need to be on cleaning duty. So they have mm-hmm. him like cleaning toilets and like take it out the trash. And like, I loved it. <laughs> Yes. And he didn't complain I, once because he was like, this is great. I'm going to go back I, again. I thought it would be so much funnier in the movie if I they had too. him in toilets. And didn't they have him like in the book? Didn't they say the first day he wore like dress pants and something? And he was like, no, he said, I wore jeans and I sweat straight through them. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't even want to look at your shoes. Like, I don't even want to know what your shoes look like. But I mean, then great. I don't- yeah, I know it wasn't that big a deal in terms of the changes, but I thought it would have been – I thought it, I didn't think it needed to be changed, but I get it because that's part of the reason, you and know, she, she doesn't have her own too. job. She's working at a nursery because that's what she's trying to do. So, you know, and and the beginning of the movie is, is very different from the book. Um, the beginning – they both have a breakup scene. The, the, book, the book and the movie, they both break up. Susanna with her long-term boyfriend, who she thought... 12 years. In the book. 12, 12 years. years. Which I was trying to figure out how old they were. I think she said at one point she was like 20... 29, because they met 29. in 29. Yeah, so 12, they met in 17. So 12... Years. And not just 12 years, like, oh, 12 years, but 12 years of what he being a going into the military and her staying because he goes on deployment and then comes back and then she waits for another deployment and then comes back and and that was yeah he went on three deployments 12 years and she and you know they have this very long breakup on the beach and he basically tells her i met someone else uh and a big line that's repeated throughout the book is i found the right ring right. But the wrong girl. Right, Reed? Listen, can you imagine hearing that? Can you imagine saying it? No. No. Can you imagine hearing it? Uh, No. And I'm sorry, but if somebody said that to me on the beach, sand or driftwood or something would be thrown. (laughs) You know, so it was very, it was very long and it was very drawn out. And there's, you learn a lot about why she stuck around for 12 years Um, you find out that her parents 
at one point were fighting very intensely and they, I think they even divorced and then they got remarried. And so her childhood was very volatile, I guess, because they were always fighting and she wasn't very secure in that. Yeah, so, yeah. I didn't like the instability at all. Right. Okay. And so part of the reason why she stuck to the quote unquote plan is because she's like, I need, I need, I need it. That's what I need to be happy. And in the book, I mean, in the, yeah, and there's no one spying on them either. There's no one with binoculars. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Because <laughs> in the movie, and they're like, no spying on her with binoculars. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Well, and the and then the in the movie, he just says, "No, I don't think." Yeah, and then they just turn around and they and just walk off. Says, and okay, just walks up. I know. I wrote on my notes that breakup was too easy, and then I put, "Uh, no." <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> and it's never brought up again. No one ever says, "Are you okay from your en- almost nope. engagement slash breakup?" She just nope. meant. It almost wasn't necessary. Who cares if she? <laughs> Very true. So for the movie part, it was completely unnecessary that they had a breakup. It could have been just her car died at the middle in the front of that tree, and he ran across it. Because there was there's no really, point. <laughs> yeah, there's not really mentioned again. Like, well, I know that you're still sad about. I mean, I think I think Avery shows up at her apartment at one point and is like, "Well, now that you're no longer with so and so, you can have a life again." And she's like, "What? Adam. What do you mean?" And blah, blah, blah. But it's not really a, a running thread. Like she's afraid of commitment because of that. She's, it's like, oh yeah, we broke up. Yeah. I thought I was going to get engaged under this tree, and I didn't. No, we're on the beach, and it was just like, okay, peace out. Side note: Thanks. that tree in the movie. What did you think of it? Because <laughs> in uh, the book, they make it sound very grand and very romantic and now i understand now i understand they had to shoot that because you can see their breath in the middle uh, so okay that yeah, i wrote that down too somewhere i was like um are they freezing it's, yes because, because they're shot in the dead of winter in canada and you can see it's super cold it's not springtime when they shot that movie that's why there's no leaves there's no nothing they tied those fake flowers to that little section of fence it was so it was that was I was there. so I didn't realize the first time I watched it. The second time I watched it, I'm literally laying in bed and listen because they're having that little, I guess, coffee with him and Mrs. Waller out on the patio or whatever. Ice tea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like, tea. And so I see that I'm watching, and I'm like, I literally bolt up straight in bed, and I'm like, oh my lord, is that is it freezing there? <laughs> I didn't rewatch it. Like everybody had crystals coming out of their mouth. And then I felt so bad when they're actually in Cambria and Avery's shopping in that little sundress. And I'm like, girl, and they're sleeveless. And they're like, I wanted to see that. I wanted to see the set people behind them all in their little, you know, beanies. And (laughs) okay, so that one Hallmark movie that we went to as extras. Yes. Down here in Connecticut. Yeah, it was the middle of the night because it was it was cold like it was winter and it was cold because it's winter in new england and the shoot went to like 3 a.m and we're out doing the outdoor scenes for this christmas movie and sure enough they bring the actual star like the leads of the movie out and they're covered in blankets as they're waiting and then the moment they just whoosh they throw them off and they go do their scene and then they run back and they whoosh the blankets are back on and action and then and cut and they were running and oh my gosh and i just felt so bad for them because we were lucky enough that our dress code was legit winter wear because we were hot but they you know they have to just have their little jackets on with their little (laughs) it's all very cute looking not real new england like I'm going outside for real. So I just, I, it made me laugh because I was like, you know, this was shot in winter and they tried to make it look like spring. They tried to tie some flowers on some fences and stuff, <laughs> but it was straight up winter. <laughs> yeah. And the poor tree. It, it was looked, like, so it was better with lights. <laughs> yes, it did. It was very sweet with the lights at the end. It was better with lights. But like, you know, here we have huge oak trees. Like in, yeah. in South Texas, you know, we have these huge, majestic yes. oak trees 
that basically shade almost an acre. <laughs> yes. But they're so beautiful. And you can go under it. It's like a little house hut almost. And so, like, I was like, oh, I guess they don't have trees. And, and I'm like, no, they have no trees in Georgia. Like, it's in Georgia. Like, Right. But I think it was shot probably in Vancouver or something, like, technically. But I just, I was like, our grandma's pecan tree in her backyard was bigger. I know. And it had some really good pecans until the squirrels came. Yeah, I just had to ask you about that tree because in the book, it's so elaborate. And then you see it in the movie and you're like, okay, I get it. But it's winter. You have to do with what you have to do. I get it. Yay for the tree. Yay for the light. We'll say yay for the light on said tree. Yes. Now, in another thing, just very quickly about the beginning is when Susanna and Nate do meet for the first time, it's still a car, it's still a flat mm-hmm. tire. But mm-hmm. in the book, Nate is like, I race cars on my free time. I know how to do it. And he changes the tire like no big deal because he's like, yeah. I know how to do it. And in the movie, he's like, wait, how do you do this? What is this? And they uh, try I, and figure I would it have out. That this would come with directions or instructions. Yes. In the book, yeah. <laughs> they go into a lot more detail. Um. With each other in that initial meeting at the tire, they they do talk about a lot more because they go into, you know, Susanna eventually talks about how she was broken up with and her job situation, and then he, you know, they they do talk a lot more. Where in the in the movie, it's a shorter, it's a shorter thing. Now, which one did you think worked better? Like, which did you like better? Well, I don't know. So, like, but I think they both worked really well based on the fact that they were somewhat different entities. So, like, right. but I will say, having read the book and going back and watching the movie, the 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 meet cute, shall we say, of the movie was very, very simplistic, like very mm-hmm. simple. And I thought the book one was at least a little more like, I don't need you to save me. I can know what I'm doing here or whatever. I can do this myself. Because she had just broken up, like, with this guy, and she was a little bit, like... I don't need anybody. Go away. Yeah. No, I don't need this right now. Don't, what, what? Just what? <laughs> I can do this, okay? I mean, come on. <laughs> and, of course, he comes in to, here I come to save the day. Right. I, I just, for me, I thought it was... I, I, I'm like you. I, they both worked for different reasons. But in the book, I remember thinking, why are you telling so much to a stranger on both ends? Because, I mean, listen, I had a job once where it was three years until the people I worked with even knew I had kids. <laughs> I don't yeah, share a whole lot. <laughs> you and I are very different in those ways, though. So. I know. So I was very like, different. So much. And I know that some people that's just natural, but for me, I'm like, why are you airing out your business to this person you just met? Oh, and I'm very much like I, I tell it. I tell I probably tell too much. Well, sure. you got the true southern genes. <laughs> Come on, it's made a fail. What yes, I got about? the yeah. I'm introverted with touch of anxiety. Don't even look at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and so I, I did think that in the, in, I think, I do think in both instances, their conversation flowed naturally. Yes. But as someone who doesn't like to share a lot, I liked the movie one for its brevity. <laughs> <laughs> and see, and I liked, I probably liked the book one a little better because I was like, oh, come on. Like, really? <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, of course, it's unrealistic to say everything, but I could see myself being flustered in that moment and somebody kind of helping me and me just like vomiting everything that just happened. Because <laughs> like, you're all stressed out. You're like, okay, so I'm terrified. It's because this guy just broke up with me. And oh my God. Like, you guys <laughs> broke up with me. It's been, we've been dating 12 years. Like, 12 years. Like, who breaks up with somebody after 12 years? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> and all I want to do is go home, and my car has a flat. Like, seriously, and now you come, and I can take care of this, but why is this getting car? Do you think, like, I could totally see myself. Oh, my God. And me, I would just have changed the tire and gone home, and not even met him, and not even met a prince. <laughs> just like, done. After me, after me, like, doing all that, I'd probably scare him off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we find out during the breakup and it's mentioned throughout the book that Susanna's parents have divorced and remarried, which is the main reason why she was with Adam for so long and why she's so structured. But how do you think 
by removing that aspect from the movie, how do you think that changed the dynamic of the movie? Because for me, that was her whole, that was a huge part of her character. When you take that aspect out of the movie, there was really nothing holding her back. I guess her big conflict like for herself was wondering if she's good enough to be confidence. a yeah. She just like in the movie she just liked confidence. And yeah. it was just a matter of being scared to break away from the stability, I guess, of working for mom and dad. Yeah. In the and, movie. And finding her own path in her career, which, you know, it's fine on its own. But when you, then when you read the book and you realize there's so much more, you're like, okay, well, we're missing a lot of layers here. Because by throwing in, you know, a challenged relationship with her, far- or her parents, that would really affect how she views relationships moving forward. So maybe, and this is just me probably really overthinking it, but maybe, you know, when it's finally revealed in both the book and the movie uh, that you know, Nate Kenneth is actually Prince Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. I would think that because, you know, her past and her relate, her parents' relationship, she'd be like, don't lie to me. Like this is, (laughs) this is part of the reason why I don't want liars in my life. And I don't want people hiding stuff. And I don't want this is, you know, but again, I'm probably reading too much into it, but I thought that was kind of a loss. This was also kind of when Hallmark was in a in the very still very form. I mean, they still are a formula. You know, their scripts do align to a certain formula. But this was when they were very specific on what you could and couldn't do. So I'm sure that part of the parents being divorced was you can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Because, you know, in the recent batch of movies this last year, we've had a lot of different types of families and types of family situations. We've seen a lot more in terms of um, real life, Mm -hmm. you know. And so I'm wondering if this movie was made now, if we would get some of these extras because, maybe, you know, which which to me would be interesting. But, you know, so um, but, you know, part of the part of the reason why she doesn't want to pursue a relationship with Nate is because of that. But also part of the reason why Nate doesn't want to pursue a relationship with her in the book is because of, Oh my God, the entailment. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to talk about the entailment. The law. The law. So law. in the, in the, the movie, law. it's just tradition that anybody from Cambria has to marry a Cambrian citizen and it's just tradition. And that's the way it's supposed to be the end. And that's, that's the big deal is yeah. she's not a, a Cambrian citizen. We, you just, you're not supposed to marry her, but they get over it, whatever. In the book, however, there's a very, very detailed law that happened in the early 1900s where Prince Nathaniel's great somebody decided to sign a document with another somebody from another country. Um, okay, this is where I'm going to say I I lost <laughs> track of that thread very quickly. That's when you skim really fast. You skim over it really fast. It was basically country A could not marry anybody outside of their country because a long, long time ago, they married a princess from another country that was in trouble. I'm assuming. And she used that and original she, Yeah. Yes. So she used her wedding alliance to the original country to persuade her spouse to use all of his army to protect her country. Former country and declare war. But then there's a whole part about the Brighton has a sister relationship with another country called Heisenberg, Heisberg something, and they want their own independence, but they can't until there's a bloodline relative that can take over. And so he, Prince Nathaniel, either has to marry somebody or within that bloodline to make that person duchess of that other country. Otherwise, the country gets absorbed into Brighton and it was, it, uh, it was a I lot. feel bad at saying this, but it gave me tired head. I didn't get it, it when I read lot. it. And I'm going to say that when this is where I had to do something to figure it out. When we read this in January, I did my eyes glazed over. I didn't get the intel <laughs> talk. 
I'm not gonna lie. I just no, I was I like, just, it, I went, it went over my head. It just it was a lot of names and dates and dates characters. And just, King yeah, even like, King 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 I get it. He can't marry Susanna. Fine, that's yeah. all I need to know. Yeah. When I listened to it via audiobook, uh-huh. it made a lot more sense having somebody say it out loud. To yes. Me. <laughs> so I'm an audio learner. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this makes more sense, but I still don't fully get it. I'm like, great. He can't get married. He's supposed to marry this one, whatever. But the point, the whole point of it, though, in my opinion, is that it is an extremely detailed reason as to why. It wasn't right. a simple, just it's a just law tradition. and a tradition, and that's it. And that, you know, because otherwise it's, it, it's just what happens in the movie. Well, I'm the prince now, so, or the king now, so I can change the law and I can do whatever I want. It wasn't that easy in the book. It was so many different things involved. And as, <laughs> and as the end rapidly became closer, I was like, how is this going to work? Because no matter what they do, mm-hmm. this intel is still there. And I kept thinking, and I'm not going to say how they resolve it, because if you guys want to read it, you know, I'm not going to say how they resolve it. It does get resolved. <laughs> and, I just, and I just kept thinking... Is she gonna be secretly royalty? <laughs> I'm gonna pull out that she's secretly royalty. That's all I kept thinking. I was like, because I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> no, no. I didn't it was think- it was fine. The way it worked out, it was fine. I just it was it was a lot, and it's it not something I think would have worked in the movie. Absolutely unless, not. Unless that was the movie. If the movie was from Nate's perspective and it was his journey to love and he had to overcome this, I get it, but it wasn't. This is Susanna's story. Yeah. It was it was a lot. So just FYI, if you guys want to read this, the entailment is a lot. And if you do read it and you do get it, send me an email at which was better podcast at gmail.com with a detailed PowerPoint and I'd appreciate it. <laughs> or maybe not detailed, but just, you know, <laughs> layman's terms that we can understand. <laughs> Explain it to me in an email. I appreciate it. I Where I don't need a Tylenol and like a beer. Because <laughs> my head hurts. I didn't get it. So, maybe, maybe is, this, is the author somewhat like uh, European or anything? Maybe, maybe they know something that we don't know. I don't know. I just like, could you just real quick send me your notes on we this book? We didn't study that in world history. Sorry. Like, we have Texas history. Yeah. There you go. So, you know, eventually it all comes out. The big secret. Nate's a prince. Yes. You know, um, which I liked the way she found out in the movie. Oh, I'm sorry. I like the way that she found out in the book way better than the way she found out in the movie. With, really? Yes. Okay. I will say, I will say this. Okay. I thought it was unique. It is. It was unique, and I did like it. in the In the book, she finds out via a coin from the country, and she sees Nate's face on it. And she's it. like, uh, "I know this face." <laughs> she's like, "Hold which, the phone," <laughs> which leads her down a rabbit hole to start researching him, and she finds him, and she, you know, yeah, yeah, and so she confronts him, and in the movie. Avery finds an article and brings it to her. Now, the confrontations in the book and in the movie are very different. Susanna yeah. in the book is like all riled up because she has a, a an appointment with Nate the very next day to discuss the garden plans. And she's like, fine, we'll do bu-. in her mind. She's like business first. And then we're talking about this king stuff. What the heck? You know, what the heck? Is this in the book? Yeah, in the book. And yeah. so when she gets yeah. there, he catches her off guard because he's, you know, being all cute and, you know, princely. And she kind of does this weird curtsy. And he's like, what are you what doing? Are you, are you trying to curtsy? Did you? She's like, no, I fell. No. She's like, it's <laughs> no volleyball in the Greek. I got plenty of like, That does not happen. Yeah, she's he's like I've seen plenty of bad curtsies in my life. I know one when I see. And she's like, well, why would I have a reason to curtsy? And he's like, how'd you find out? And she goes, why didn't you tell me? How did you find? Out? And they just go back and forth. And I'm like, this guy's really getting mad at her because she found out, sir. You lying liar who lies. Yeah, I but I did appreciate in the book that they thoroughly talked it out because they really do. They do. Very well, my dad. I thought yes. they did very well. I did enjoy that 
a lot more. It started out kind of angry and kind of aggressive, but we get a very much we get a long a longer scene in the book with a lot more rational discussion <laughs> about it. So I did appreciate that. Yeah. But I did like in the movie. I did like in the movie when she just gets out of the car straight up and she goes, yeah. You're a prince. <laughs> Which like, by the way is very much like the Southern Bell. Like, like, I was gonna say yeah. People in real life are definitely hold up. I'm driving right over there right now. Forget the phone. Driving right over there. Now it would have been better if she like did like the Dukes of Hazard drive in where she went and like like kicked up dirt <laughs> and hopped out. What is this? But I did. She goes, "You're a prince," and he's like, "Oh, you found out." And she goes, "Yeah, I found I, out." Yeah, she sure did. Did that, you not think I was going to find out? I did like her face in that scene. She was like, "Yeah, I did." But, sure did. You know, and then we get you know the typical misunderstanding. Of course, we all know they end up heavily ever after. Are you ready to talk about something you missed? What was one thing from the book or the movie that you wish? So I guess what I missed from the movie that was not in that was not in the movie that was in the book. Yes, was, and I know, and I know the reason why though. So it's not it's hard for me to say that believably it would be there, but well, like, okay. but even, but I liked the conflict that was missing in the movie versus the book, whether it be like, even when she went to um, the castle and she stayed on the ground and there was that, that lady that just shows up at her door telling her, Oh, you're the American. Don't think I don't know what you're doing here. Uh, you're not going to get away with this. And, da, 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 da. and I've got, she's like, got her, I got my eyes on you. Like, I know what you're doing. And she had that conflict of her being there and having to face the adversity of the other house members. I guess they were like cousins or something. I'm not sure what she was. Right. But, but then the conflict with Jenny. Jenny in the movie was. Oh, I saw her looking at her. Yeah, I saw her looking at you, and I know that you'll never look at me that way. And I just want you to be happy and blah 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 blah. And yeah. I missed Aurora. I thought Aurora I, was awesome. I miss a good villain. You know, I I want to see it. It's good in a book, but I also want to see it. The queen tried, but she she, she tried to be the villain. In the book, they kind of all three of them between the queen and Stephen and Lady Jenny, they all work to try yep. and. You know, oh, keep no. Suzanne out of there. And I, I did really miss the rib shack. Like the rib shack yeah. was awesome. I did. There, there's no real way to. I mean, there is a way to describe it, but I thought in the book. But I thought in the movie, one of the best scenes was them dancing. Yes. In that little ballroom, when they when they go in, it's just Nate and Susanna, and the lighting in that scene, and just the movement, and then the camera goes above them and shows them dancing. I thought that was so pretty. Her dress is gorgeous on her. I thought that oh, white dress was good because in in the book she wore white, and it was noted that it was the color ball, and I guess oh, she yes. felt bad that she was wearing a white dress and everybody else was in a color. Yes. But then in the movie, it wasn't really a dress, but she was still wearing a, re- a white dress. And I thought that was kind of cool because, okay, now we didn't talk about this, but Aurora and all of her eclecticness gave uh, Susanna shoes. They right. were golden Christian Louboutins or whatever you call it, mm-hmm. shoes. Fancy, fancy, expensive, expensive shoes. And I didn't think about it until just now, but by her giving her the shoes... And her wearing the white dress, it's a very much Cinderella moment in the movie. Yes. I mean, in the book. Yes. So maybe Aurora was her fairy godmother. <laughs> right. Well, no, you're right. Because in the in the book, they don't run, Nate and, and um, Susanna don't run into each other just randomly while she's working in the gardens. Like, she, he doesn't see her physically until like the coronation stuff. And that is one of the big things that I missed from the from the book in the movie like 
that was in the book that wasn't in the movie was there's a moment during the coronation where everybody knows to kneel Mm -hmm. and she does it and she stands up and she's the only one standing and Nate looks at her and there's this moment between the two and they realize like they're in it together and it's a very nice it's a very um romantic sweet moment and they don't have that part the the coronation is there and he does look at her he does smile but it's a lot more charged in the book and i i did agree that would have been nice to have in the movie just to show it's them against (laughs) they're on the same page basically yeah so yeah that was a good part that was a good part of the book but i did love um Megan Park, who played Susanna, when she came down the stairs in that white dress. Isn't she beautiful? Like, it was so pretty. That dress was, was like, like yeah. I, wanted, I was like, I wonder if she got to take it home because it looks so good on her. Well, who else is gonna, it's like a Polly Pocket dress. It so <laughs> I want to take it at home and I'd be like, okay, I just wear this around and the house. It, and in the shadow box, like my kids' clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so small. I don't know. It was gorgeous, and I thought it worked. Oh, it was absolutely gorgeous. That was so pretty on her. And I'm like, of course they put Lady Jenny in all black because she's the villain. They put her in all black. But was she really? I mean, no, she, she really was a whole different version of a villain. I, yeah, I want I a real villain again. Because the Mark used to put some out there. I mean, of course they're still G-rated, and it's not like we're going to oh, get I like. Know. At this point, he was G-rated too, but she was like. <laughs> She was just like, oh, okay, goodbye. <laughs> oh, I saw you. You're yeah, in love we with her. Out. Well, I'm like, gosh darn, I tried. I'm like, girl, go for John. He's right there. He's oh, yeah. <laughs> You better watch out. That's all I know. <laughs> in the book, you better watch out. They better have a royal taste tester. <laughs> have to <the> date. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Okay, so I think I think we covered it, and the only question left is the hardest one of all. See, but I don't think that's a fair question because they are so different. I know, but you have to choose one. If you could only choose one. So and this I might could... be it's subjective. Like, which did yeah. you... Would... So had I never read the book, I probably would have just enjoyed the movie. Right. Because it's so simplistic and it was sweet and you don't have to worry about all the extras that are like super heavy. It's got a lot of heavy stuff in it. Yeah, because we didn't even talk about in the book in the book when they go to a church, they go visit a church oh, and they fall very heavy. Yeah. They fall asleep in the church and they wake up and the press is outside and they come out all rumpled and everybody's like, Yeah, what were y'all doing at the what church? What happened in the church? What happens in the church after hours? What's <laughs> happening in the church? Yeah. yeah so there was a lot that went on. So I think if you have the inclination to like really get into depth, then you would really like the book. But my brain has so much on its mind right now. I am <laughs> that I am perfectly fine <laughs> to watch the movie and be perfectly happy that she didn't have to worry about anything. He was her shining or I mean, come on, we're talking fiction. Yes. So I think if I had to, I don't let's just put it this way. I would watch the movie again. I don't think I would read the book again. There it is. There's your decision. And Man. I want to say ditto. <laughs> read the book twice now and it was you know i did too well i read one and listened to it once but yes i consider audiobooks reading your brain is still engaged oh my word then you have opened up a whole new world to me because (laughs) you and i both know reading was not my thing (laughs) i'll get you an audible account i'll send you a link for three free books (laughs) oh you don't have to i get them free on my library uh (gasps) uh, library card yep shout out to hoopla I know. Shout out to Hoopla. Uh, yeah, Libby. that's how I did this one too. I got the ebook and then I got the audiobook through Hoopla. Hey. I have, I have, I have Libby. Yeah, I've got that one too. Trust okay. me, I got all of them all. Mm. Wow. So yeah, so I would go with, I, yeah. mo- I would go with movie. I did. I okay. I enjoyed the book. I thought it was. I liked all the layers. Uh, yes, I thought it was a little bit more detailed than I needed. You know, in terms of the entailment. <laughs> Sorry. So if I had to pick one, I'm going to go. So I agree with you. I, I would watch the movie again because I really like that movie. Yeah. 
And they're very cute. They are cute. They're cute. They're so, cute. Sweet. so I'm going to go ahead and pick movie. Okay. We, I did it. We did it. We sure did. We did it. And I had so much fun talking about I this. And I appreciate your time. Thank you for being patient with me as I rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled. <laughs> hey, it's a good thing I've got like so much going on. It didn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. So but I'm just waiting for the next list to come out. I'll send it to you. Can you and make sure and send me one that doesn't have entailments in it? And Agreed. I'll put a little note. <laughs> put a little asterisk by it or smiley faces or stars. <laughs> yes. I'll put on there. Like these are safe here. So uh, since my sister does not really do the whole social media thing, I'm going to go ahead and say that you can find me online at Lisa Fay CO, Lisa Fay Co on Twitter and Instagram. And you can follow the pod on Twitter and Instagram at which was better, or you can join us at which was better.com. So thank you guys for listening. We appreciate each and every one of you. I read your comments, your retweets, all of it. I, I just I appreciate it so much um, those of you that share these that you give us reviews and ratings on iTunes and, and whatnot I just I appreciate it so much so shout out to the listeners thank you and we will see you next time thanks for having me